Last week, the Alberta government announced its uh, hydrogen vision and strategy. Uh, this fall, the federal government's hydrogen strategy is expected. And hydrogen is all the rage in the news, very trendy right now. And it, this will not come as a surprise uh, to most Canadians. We are leaders in the technology on the demand side, which is around fuel cells and especially the electrification of transportation. So we're going to bring you profiles of various Canadian companies involved in this space. And we're, we're going to start with Unilia Canada Fuel Cells. And I'd like to welcome uh, General Manager Robert Artebis to the interview. Nice to meet you. Well, look, Robert, um, well, we know that Canada is a leader in fuel cells, but that's about as far as it goes, I think, for most people. Can you give us an overview of what your company does? Uh, so my company, so I started off in fuel cells at about 23 years ago, like most people in with Ballard Power Systems, uh, then moved on. Um, so I worked there for about 12 years, then worked on it uh, with Mercedes and Ford at a company called Automotive Fuel Cell Cooperation for 10 years. And then we kicked off um, Unilia Fuel Cells in uh, 2017. Um, and, uh, and so uh, it's been growing uh, rapidly. I think we started with uh, three employees. Uh, today we're over. Uh, we're just actually approaching 100 employees, uh, 40 of which are in Canada, and uh, and um, and about 60, 60, 70 of which are in China. Uh, so what our company is focused on is the production of uh, fuel cells targeted at um, the small truck, uh, small trucking to to, to um, a heavy haul truck uh, market. Uh, we well, launched our first product in July. Of this year, and so we're just kind of on that first uh, building up our our our, our, our production capacity uh, and and uh, and uh, going through those struggles of line stable. Now uh, we've argued at Energy Media, we've argued in, editorially that uh, Canada should put a lot more resources into uh, medium to heavy duty uh, commercial electric vehicles, trucks, and the kind of vehicles you're talking about because that seems to be where the opportunity is greatest going forward, not on the light duty side. Would you agree with that? And is that kind of your company strategy to pick that, to exploit that market, uh, market segment? Yeah, I think, I think from the light duty side, there's, there's, there's there, uh, hydrogen and, and fuel cells um, are definitely, there's, there's a place for them. Uh, and uh, obviously I focused on that for many years at, with Mercedes and Ford. So I wouldn't say there isn't a focus there or there isn't a, a market there, uh, but for sure uh, there's a strong market in the heavy duty and medium duty trucking side. Uh, when it comes to uh, long ranges, when it comes to efficiencies, uh, uh, fuel cells definitely, um, you're not hauling so much battery, you're hauling uh, a lot more goods and you, and, and you can have your, your trucks on the road for, um, uh, the majority of the time. I had a guest on about six months ago who uh, his opinion was that hydrogen would really lend itself well to long haul trucking and short haul, uh, you know, within a region might be done by uh, smaller electric vehicles, electric trucks. Um, is that kind of your take as well? Uh, yes and no. I think, I think uh, at the short haul, uh, you could go with with both options again, it all depends on how often and how long you want your trucks on the road for. So if you can only envision, uh, if you only need those trucks that, that fleet on the road for a short period of time, uh, I think a BEV option or a battery electric vehicle option uh, is possible. It has infrastructure issues as well. So with the hydrogen, it's a, it's, it's a lot more scalable if you're gonna put out 100 trucks or, or, or 50 trucks uh, at your local depot. Um, uh, versus uh, having to deal with all the charging and infrastructure around uh, all the elect electricity demand at that location. So I think even for the short haul uh, with, with, with many trucks on the road, typically typically eight to 10 hours, I, I still think uh, hydrogen is, 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 in my opinion, a better choice, but I don't want to I don't want to definitely say there isn't an option or, or, or an availability um, for battery electric vehicles as well. Also, it comes in, uh, uh, the, the, the climate comes into um, um, uh, effect and, uh, and and the terrain. Is there many hills? Is it quite flat? Uh, if there's many hills, I think hydrogen uh, leans itself to that as well. And then it all comes down to your whole fleet dynamic. Uh, how many different solutions do you want uh, on site? Things like that. So 
Sure. Um, last question, Robert. I'm, I'm very curious about the fact that you've got uh, your production facilities in China as well as some design and engineering staff. Is it simply a matter of cost? Can China uh, turn out this, these kinds of products just so, cheaper than we can in Canada? I wouldn't say cheaper. I think uh, I think uh, like like look at on a um, on an internal combustion engine today. Uh, you know, there's there's somewhere. There's somewhere around 15 to, to 37 minutes of labor. So, so most, most things are automated uh, uh, in the internal combustion side. The same thing is true for the fuel cell side. There's basically two main components. The assembly and production of the components is, is, is fully automated. So basically it's just coming down to, to, to the bricks and mortar um, and, uh, and the electricity to run those machines uh, once you've invested in that capital. Uh, for us, uh, there's a strong, strong Chinese market, uh, and to produce domestically uh, makes us more competitive. So, um, you know, China has uh, uh, over 6,000 fuel cell vehicles and trucks on the road today, uh, with a vision to have 10,000 by the end of 2020, um, and, uh, and it's just the world leader. And so that's where we should be with our production. Uh, just a supplemental, then, is, is it possible as the North American market develops? That you'll bring, you'll uh, put put uh, production facilities in Canada or the U.S. Yeah, that's fully all open. I think we just do what makes sense for our company, um, uh, and 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 the and the local governments uh, uh, trying to get as much support there to uh, um, to roll this out. Robert, thank you very much for this. Really appreciate it, and uh, we'll keep tabs on your company and maybe have you back for uh, another interview. Sounds great. Nice talking with you.